This is Bruce Freed, the accountant guy, coming at you one more final time with steroid free accounting. We're finishing up the chapter on asset disposal. And I do want to remind you guys that I know you're going to miss me. I'm going to miss you guys. But I'll tell you what, when you're on campus one day, if you're on the La Plata campus, stop into the ST Building 174 and say, hi, Bruce. And I won't even know who you are. But anyway, let's move on with the chapter. And what we're going to do this time is, is we've already gotten, we've junked the car, we've sold the car for cash. Now what we're going to do is we're going to trade it in. And what's going to happen is, is, is that the dealer's going to basically say, okay, you're buying a $15,000 new vehicle. I'm going to give you credit for your car of $10,000, and then I want another $5,000 cash. Now, all of that is explained. No, I, I apologize. It's the opposite way around. The dealer says, I'm going to give you credit for your car of $5,000, and I want $10,000 cash. So you give up the car that he says is worth five, and you're going to give him cash of 10, and of course, you've really given up $15,000 worth of value. And there's the fair market value of your new car. And again, that will be explained in the, in the written analysis that I have for you here. But we're going to follow the four accounting steps to record this trade-in. Of course, we know that the steps are, step one is to always remove the old asset. So let's go down and take a look at that and do that. And here's our step one, remove the old asset, remove the old vehicle. If you look up here on the board, you can see the vehicle had in the vehicle account $13,000 and had accumulated depreciation of five at this point. So our first entry is to flip these out and remove them. By doing that, by making that very first entry, we've set this account to zero, and we've set that account to zero because the vehicle is going to be gone, and that's the purpose of this very first entry. That's step one. Step two would be to record cash in or out. That's the steps that I've given you, and again, when you record cash in or out, cash in, of course, is on the left, it's a debit, cash out is on the right, it's a credit, and we do have cash going out. We said we were going to pay what? $10,000. So all we're going to do is credit cash now and add it to this entry. And so when we credit the cash at $10,000, we have now built the entry to look like this. And so there's our original removal of the old asset, and there's the payment of the $10,000. All right, so step one, remove the old asset. Step two, go ahead and record cash in or out, which was out at this point in time. Step three is to record the new asset in at its fair market value. Now, as again, again, you either are going to have to just be told that the new asset is worth $15,000, or as it explains in this anal written analysis that I've also provided you with online, it says that if the new car is the old the car you're trading in, I'm sorry, they tell you is worth five and they want another ten thousand dollars, that means that really the new asset is worth fifteen. So we'll go ahead and we'll now take this entry here and we'll add to it the new vehicle by debiting it for fifteen. And now we have step three right here going for us instead. Okay? Um, now you can see we've recorded the new asset, we've removed the old asset right here and what we have also and the and the accumulated depreciation that was associated with it and we have the cash so our last step as in all of them is to always balance the journal entry out with a debit or credit and again if you recall it says losses are debits and gains are credits and again if i look at this entry if i was to balance it out i have a twenty thousand dollar debit here and i have a twenty three thousand dollar credit here Okay, and so therefore I can see that this entry is out of balance by what? It's out of balance by exactly $3,000. There's 23 on this side, 20 on this side, and therefore I need to make a $3,000 debit to this side. And again, when I make that $3,000 debit, that's going to be, of course, a what? A loss on a trade. And therefore now I've added it to the entry and I have the loss on trade. All right, and now my entry is balanced and I followed the four steps. Now again, one thing that I do want to remind you about, okay, is the fact that when you do the journal entries on the exam for me and I give you an entry like this, I don't want to see this and, or this or this. The only thing I'm looking for is the end product. And the end product is this amount 
this entry right here. The purpose of learning this in steps is so you can get from point A to point B, and that's, that's really what I, what I want you to remember. Don't show me this, the, these steps. This is really what we're looking for. This is not a journal entry because the debits and credits are not equal. This is not a journal entry. The debits and credits are not equal. This is not a journal entry. The debits and credits are what? Are not equal. But this is a journal entry because we have the debits and the credits equal. Remember when we do journal entries, debits and credits must be equal. Also notice all my debits are first, they're next to the margin, and my credits are what? These credits are second. And that is an actual, excuse me, my phone is vibrating here. I apologize. Um, I do not know why, why, hold, just hold on for a second. Um, yes, Gina. Yes. Well, no, I am teaching my students about asset disposal and yeah, but they, I don't think that they want to learn how to do no, Gino, they would not be interested in learning how to do journal entries for, for repossessions of vehicles. I mean, that's something that would be particular to your industry and, oh, you're hoping that, oh, you're hoping that they would like it so they'd come work for, for you to help. No, Gino, I don't think they'd be interested in that. Listen, let me give you a buzz back a little. Yeah. Yeah, I'll talk to you later. Okay, thanks. I'm sorry about that. Um, Gino is also another client of mine that I have. Uh, he gets a little carried away with carrying things away himself. So let, let's, let's continue on. So that was the last entry that you really need to know. And that marks the end of Chapter 10. And, and for now then, that's the end of the course. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I had a great time, and I hope you did too. And I hope to see you again real soon. For now, bye from Bruce, the accounting guy.